Now that I have environment ready, I'm going to start running my first container. And that just validates my environment again. Now to run my first container, I need an image and that's where the registry is needed. And I'm going to use the public registry that is Docker Hub. On Docker Hub, if I just run, uh, click on explore, it shows me a bunch of images which are available. I'm gonna pick a basic operating system uh, image that is for Alpine. Now Alpine is a distribution of Linux, just like Ubuntu and CentOS and OpenSUSE. But the reason why I'm choosing that is because of the footprint so if you look at the image size it is in mbs and uh, that is like in two or three or four mbs so that's really a tiny operating system based on busybox linux and that is really good for smoke testing and running smaller images just to test containers right now when you run a container this is important you have to define which application that you want to run application or a command so we are using docker to run a container and the purpose of running a container is to launch that uptime as a command. And that command comes from the image, which is Alpine and the tag that I choose. So the, if you look at the image, image has four different formats or four fields. One is the registry. Registry is this Docker Hub. Docker Hub is where all my images are hosted. So that's the first, uh, first part. And then comes the namespace and the image. So image contains just like GitHub, it contains username slash the you know the repository here so username is a namespace and you it can be username organization name or a project name depending on how you have configured it and then comes the repository colon tag tag is typically so this is a registry each of this is a registry and uh, the username so if you look at the namespace this image does not have the username that is official image from docker hub so you don't you can omit the namespace it's called as a root namespace and tag is nothing but the version of the image so you can create different images this is a repository of images it's not one image but it is a repository so the mandatory field here is the repository everything else is optional because if you don't use registry it will take docker hub if you don't use namespace it will assume root uh, if you don't use tag it will assume latest so the only thing which is mandatory is the repository which is alpine that's what i'm defining here so i'm using docker to run a container with alpine let's say version 3.6 and to run a command uptime that's the purpose the purpose of running this container is to run uptime that's something you need to start um, understanding and that's how that is different than running a vm uh, i'm going to just split the screen into two so that i can show you what happens in the background when you run that if you want to see the events you can run docker system command so docker system info has we have seen this already docker system events show you or stream the events so whenever you run a command it will you know it will show you what is happening in the what events are happening on the backend docker daemon so i'm going to run a similar command docker container run alpine this time i'm not going to define the tag so since i omit the tag it is going to pull the latest version of the image and i'm running a command called as ps so if you look at the output it says unable to find image and then it starts pulling it from library that is docker hub and it has run that application now if i run docker ps it's doesn't show me that container being run being run so what happened to my container if i run docker ps minus l it shows me the container but it is in exited status so i see the image the command the when was it created it immediately was exited and this is important uh, this uh, the, there's an important aspect towards docker is that we've seen these events happening in the docker system events and this is important that docker will be alive docker will run the container until the application inside it is running since the ps and uptime commands were one of commands and not a persistent application docker exited immediately after launching the container and running that command that's the reason why you don't see it anymore and you can try running those commands like one of commands i'm trying to create so every each one of these instruction is creating a container you can see that in the docker system events for each of that it is creating a container and then that container starts and then dies which is it is in the stopped state it's not been removed but it is in the stopped state you can list it using docker ps minus l will show you last run container minus n and the number will show you last x number of containers let's say in this case two if you use minus a it shows you it lists all the containers running these are really helpful commands and this is 
an example of running or getting started running the containers and these have been ephemeral containers so far. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to launch and persist a container.